All right, so let's just jump right into this. A little bit about me, really quick. So I'm Matt Jemison. I am a Microsoft MVP in business applications and AI platform. I got my Bachelor of Science in Computer Graphics Technology. Been working in IT my entire career. Got started with SharePoint 2007 Moss back in the day in 2008. And I work as the head of the Copilot and M365 apps platform at Takeda Pharmaceuticals. And my likes, love my family. I love to grill. I love video games. I love barbecue. I love barbecue so much I'm going to say it multiple times. Bourbon and beer craft beer. So, all right, that's enough about me. So what we're talking about today, and this actually piggybacks off of the last presentation is generative AI combined with human validation. And so what are we really talking about? Well, right now we've got really cool ways to be able to integrate data into Copilot Studio. You can bring in public website data, SharePoint data, the knowledge sources that have rolled out are just very expansive. And in the debug mode inside of Copilot Studio, we actually have an opportunity to give feedback. The thumbs up or thumbs down is what we're talking about here. And what we want to do is take this away from a debug mode where we're actually sending feedback to Microsoft. And we want to actually take this into something custom that's going to work in production, something that we can deploy to Teams or wherever, and we can have the users provide feedback to us, and then we get a chance to do something with it. So you're not just unleashing this awesome generative AI capability, but you're also going to be giving human validation to it. So expose it, right? You got a question, you got an answer. Did you like it? Did you not like it? And then being able to say, I wanna review these. I wanna see what people are saying about the feedback. So this is what we're going to be doing today. That is actually the one, two, three recipe would be one generative answers, right? We're going to use generative answers to do this, right? Azure OpenAI is going to provide us the responses. We're going to use an adaptive card. So that's what we're going to be putting together to be able to have that sort of looks good. And there are a lot of different ways we could go with it. And then we're going to have a topic triggered by message event. So we're going to get a different look at something that you've been able to do in Copilot Studio or Power Virtual Agents, a different type of trigger that maybe is not as common, but one that's going to allow us to passively collect that feedback because it's important. We don't want to ask them every single time we give an answer. Did you like it? Yes or no? Like interrupt the flow of the conversation. We want to give them those buttons to say they're here if you need them, right? But it's not something you have to do because we know users are going to get frustrated if we like put the actual yes or no feedback into the flow before they can continue the conversation. So because of that, we handle the trigger a little bit differently. And so we're going to pass data in from the adaptive card to that topic. And then I'm going to show you some stuff today with App Insights. You can do whatever you want with this data, and we'll make this sample available on my site in a blog post here in the future. But if you wanted to, for example, be able to take this data into a Power Automate flow, send it via email, if you wanted to add it to SharePoint, to Dataverse, et cetera, you could do all of that. And this structure will get you started as far as how to get to that point. So that is the end of the slides, but not the demo. All right, so here we are in Copilot Studio. We're gonna go ahead and create a new Copilot. I am going to actually just skip over and to the configure. And I'm going to, because I said barbecue three times at the beginning, I'm gonna go ahead and add a website, KamadoJoe.com. So I'm a Kamado griller. So woo -woo for any of the Kamado grillers out there, and I'm going to go ahead and add that. And let's see, that looks good. And let's go ahead and create it. Now, there's actually something new that's that's really cool. And it's in preview right now in Copilot Studio. And that is the fact that now Copilot can sort of act like chat GPT. And when I say that, I mean, it actually can handle queries if we would like it to outside of the scope of our knowledge sources. And so what exactly do I mean when I say that? Well, that is actually right here when we're talking about knowledge and the fact that we can allow the AI to use its own general knowledge preview. And so what that actually means is, is I can do something like, how tall is Michael Jordan, which I can promise you is not on the Kamado Joe website. Just trust me on that one. And we're going to actually, because that's enabled, get a response back. And, and this is really interesting too, right? You might think this, this particular feedback is for that Microsoft's injecting here, if you look, the feedback and the source information are only available in debug mode. So that's what I was talking about, sort of like, it's not even just that you want to intercept the feedback, 
this isn't something if we publish this bot right now to teams, we would see this would all drop off, right? Our solution is going to actually stick though. So that's what we're going to be replacing is being able to take that. And what we started, I started with essentially was an adaptive card. I played with that loveadaptivecards.io and we've got this sort of looks good, needs work. We've got the thumbs up emoji, thumbs down. Again, you could do whatever you wanted here, but this is sort of just a, a kind of a, here's a get started. And so what I did was I have this adaptive card. So we're going to, to make a couple changes. So we're going to go into topics and we're going to go into system and we're going to look for the conversational booster topic and we're going to jump into that. And so there's a few things happening on this create gen advancers that we need to change. If we scroll down to the very bottom and we go over to advanced, we're going to see this ability to save the LLM response. And you can see that by default, it says text only, and then it says complete, which would be recommended. And we're going to save that as a answer. And that's a record. It's a complex type. So it has multiple sub properties to it. And the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to essentially say, hey, Copilot Studio, don't send a message. And and we could we could potentially leave this right. This is gives us 100 percent control of what comes back. But again, we want to sort of just take over that actual experience. And so we've got that set up now where we're going to have all the information coming back from the answer and we're going to have the ability to choose what we want to do with it. So we're going to go ahead and close that down. Now, by default, because we're no longer asking it to show the answer, we're going to see that if we don't do anything else, right, there would be no answer. So what we would do here is we put in a message and then let's go ahead and look in this system variable. And again, this record, which is complex, has a lot of different properties. And what we actually want is the answer dot text dot markdown content. So that's actually going to give us the same type of response over here. And so I can actually save that. And I can say something like, who did Michael Jordan play for? I know who he played for, I promise. He did play for a couple teams, so to be fair. OK, so let's look. We still get our response. It's still marked down. We've actually we're not getting this anymore, right? Because again, we've sort of changed the game. So we're off to a pretty good start. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go down here to this message. We want to add an adaptive card. And so once this opens up, what we want to do is paste in that adaptive card that I had showed before. So again, now we're making really good progress and we've got a good look here and we've got the looks good look and the needs work, but we're not actually collecting any feedback. If you look at this adaptive card, it's just essentially an action, right? And we've got a little bit of data in here. It's some just sort of false data, right? It, we're basically sending over this data attribute inside of this action set is all of the data that's going to come over to the other topic that we're going to create. And so what we want to do is we want to be more dynamic. We want to actually be able to put in the values of what prompt what started this this particular topic. So what, what what did the user type and then what was the answer that we got back? So for that, we're going to change this a little bit. And for time purposes, again, I'm going to go ahead and copy something in here. I'm going to change this adaptive card to a formula because we will again want to dynamically inject data. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you really quickly what were the main things that I did here. And we've got a couple things that we need to fix. So we've got basically now where this message event we're hard coding. This is our answer feedback event. We've got like and then we've got the the prompt and that is coming from system.activity.text. And then we've got the response that's going to be this topics answer and it's that text.markdown content that I had mentioned. And then this right here, we're adding, I added this at the last second, this, this blue and red, this positive and destructive style to give them that, that blue red type style. So that's what that is. And so now we're basically, this block of data is going to dynamically be able to show us what the prompt was, what did, what did I ask? And then the response back and right from the, the actual model. And so we'll go ahead and save that. Okay, and so now the next thing that we need to do is, you know, if we were to click on this, right, we'd have the buttons, but nothing's actually managing the clicking of that. So we need to add a new topic. So we are going to go ahead and go over to topics. And we are going to add a new one. And I am going to, let's see here. 
I am missing some window space because of the fact that I have, there we go. All right, so we're gonna do topic from blank and then we're going to go in here and we're gonna change this type of topic. So we'll look at the properties and we're going to actually change this here to message received. Start the topic every time a message is received from the user. And so we're gonna click that. Now, the thing about this is, is that every single time a message is received, like this topic will literally trigger, you know, you could add whatever adaptive cards you wanted to anywhere. It's gonna always trigger every single time, right? But we don't actually want it to do that because that's, that's not the goal here is to handle every single thing happening. Happening. We are actually doing, you know, we'll, we'll call this topic custom feedback, right? And so what we want to do is we want to set a condition. We want to change this to a formula. And what we're just trying to say here is that this is when we want you to run this. So what did we just say? Well, we're just basically saying that that data block that we just showed comes over as system.activity.value. So we're basically saying, like, is there a message event in it that's not blank? And then we're going to cast that message event to text because it doesn't yet understand what that data is. And we're going to say if it's answer feedback. So at this point, this topic now is only going to run when we pass that over. Now, you could use it for multiple things if you wanted to. That would be totally fine. But we, we've got it set up so that we don't have to worry about this topic always triggering. So the next thing we're going to do is we want to make it easier to work with that actual value. And so we're going to actually look to parse a value. And we're going to, the value that we're going to parse is, see, we'll go in here and go into formula, is going to be system.activity.value. So it talks about that again. It's untyped object. We have no idea what it looks like. It could be anything. And then on the data, we're going to do this from sample data. And then what we're going to do is just pass in that schema. We're just going to basically show it the schema that we set up. Okay, so message event, my event, like, false, prompt, response. So this follows what we already added in the other event, okay? Last thing we have to do is basically just create a new variable for that. And we will go ahead and give it a little bit better name. And we will say the, we'll call it feedback. All right. So now we have the actual feedback that is coming in. And there's one other thing that we want to do. I'm going to jump over to App Insights. And I'm going to grab this connection string and this let's go back into Copilot Studio. We're going to go over to settings. We don't want to leave. We want to save this first. And we are just going to quickly add this actually to the bot. So I'm going to go to Copilot details and advanced. And I'm just literally going to paste in that connection string exactly as I got it. This has me connected to App Insights. Again, a lot of different ways you could do this. But another thing that we'll now be able to show in the demo is the ability to do something in App Insights. And so to log, right, very easily, mind you. So if we go to advanced, we can log a custom telemetry event. And if I come over here and I click properties, this is where I can give it a name. And so for this particular one, we could say, let me see what we said, custom feedback. And then as far as the properties go, we can then just paste in whatever we want here as far as the formula. And again, we're going to go ahead and just copy paste here. And so what we've got is we're basically logging the same thing, but we're also taking in the user's email address. So inside of App Insights, we're going to have a user email. We're going to have a prompt, the response, and then did they like it? Yes or no. And so that's going to go into App Insights. This is here when I mentioned at the very beginning of this that I said you can do whatever you want with this data. At this point, and you have the feedback record, we can truly do whatever we want, pass it to Power Automate, et cetera. Here, we're going to say, you know, we're going to log it in App Insights, and then we're we're going to maybe somebody's going to bring it into a Power BI report or whatnot, but we could do whatever we wanted here. The, the last thing that we're going to do here is we're going to actually add a condition, and we're going to say if feedback.like is equal to true, then we're going to put a little message here, and we're just going to say, thank you, glad you enjoyed the response. And then over here, if they didn't like it, we're going to say, we're so sorry. We'll do better next time. Now, this would also be an opportunity potentially here if we wanted to, where we could say, what didn't you like, right? And we could ask a question. We might even then log that answer too, right? But we'll just, we'll keep it pretty simple here for this particular use case. Okay, so now let's see if what we've done worked. Okay, so now let's go ahead and we're going to restart the conversation. And let's say, what accessories does the Kamado Joe have? And again, keep in mind that where we intercepted this and 
outside that actual boosting topic where this is going to happen for all of the knowledge bases. Now, if you have custom topics that you add and the way you handle it, you can set that up differently, but we're using sort of the general generic topic. So even if I asked again about who or when, where was Michael Jordan born, right? It doesn't matter whether or not it's actually coming from my knowledge source or not. It's getting output from that topic, okay? So now we have our looks good, need work, needs work. And so if we click one of these, so look, thank you. Glad you enjoyed the response. If we would have said needs work on that, we're so sorry. We'll do better next time. So this is, again, pretty passive, right? Users can provide feedback if they want to. They absolutely don't have to. But now instead of it going to Microsoft, this is something that's going to go directly to us. So the last thing that I will show to wrap up the demo is we're going to go back to App Insights and we are going to do a new query. And I will go ahead and again, copy some information over and we will see here, wait for this to load. It is really, it is really loving me right now. Let's see if we could just refresh this. Let's try that one more time. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to a uh, set of days. So I had some feedback that already came in because what's going to happen is when I just clicked that needs work, good job, whatever, it's going to take a couple minutes for that information to make its way into App Insights. It is getting logged, I promise, but we're not going to, since we're almost here at 11 o'clock, we'll go ahead and just show you. So these are other things where I was essentially liking or not liking one. And so again, you can see who was the user what was the prompt that came in what was the response and so this particular query is something that i absolutely could give again to a power bi developer where we could build a dashboard where we could get that feedback in have someone monitor it etc but again you've got now passive feedback where we're going to be able to see what generative ai is saying and we're going to be able to see that validation from the user and be able to follow up accordingly so that is it and with that Thank you.